Well, it really goes back to the day that, um, that IBM, or the weekend that IBM announced the product. IBM announced the 3660, the first scanning supermarket system, on uh, October 11th, it's a Thursday, uh, in, ni in uh, 1973. And uh, the way that was done is they, they actually took a system to the uh, National Association of Food Chains executive session at a, I believe, the Mayflower Hotel in Washington, D.C. And the, the, the fun story about that was that uh, they didn't have approval to announce on late Wednesday, and the, the system they were going to demonstrate had to be on the truck and on its way to Washington if it was going to get there by Thursday. And so uh, they put it on the truck and sealed it and told the driver to keep driving around the hotel until he got a call. <laughs> and, Are you serious? Yes, that's true. And, and so they finally called the driver and he was able to go in and unload the uh, cash register and go into a demonstration thing. Now when there was, there was supposed to be one other demonstrator, uh, one other exhibitor at this exhibit, and when he heard that IBM was actually going to exhibit something, he pulled out. Because if IBM was going to exhibit, it meant there really was not one, <laughs> and it would uh, it would show up. So he pulled out, and IBM brought it in, set it up, and ran it. And we we had a demonstration that we just loved. We had a bar of, of KMA soap with a stick-on label on it, an adhesive label, and we would stand up at the front end of the, you know the, where you stick your put your groceries on the product, at the very end of that thing on the belt, and we would throw. The Kame suit across the all the way down the length of the belt and across the scanner, and it would go, and it would ring up, and people would just stand back. And so around, I don't know, three or four o'clock in the afternoon on on Thursday, they brought down uh, the executives from their session to go down and see this demonstration, and watch us throw the the Kame bar, and they were so amazed they skipped the bar. And they went back up and got their wives and came back down. So the way I got this job was I, I just I went to California for the announcement. Everyone in the Market Sports Center had a different place to go. I went to California and came back on Monday. And as I was walking out of the old red conference room, which was the briefing room we had for grocery people, my boss, Bill Carey, was walking down the hall and he was grinning from one ear to the other. And I said, how did it go in Washington? He told me the story I just told you about how the, the executives didn't go to the, uh, to the bar. They went, brought their wives back because they said, you won't believe this. And they, they showed uh, their wives how this check stand worked. Couldn't have gone better. Everyone was very excited. And I don't know why, but I just did a head jerk and looked at them and said, I hope there's more symbols to scan than we have. And he goes, why don't you see what you can do about that? which was the way Bill Carey managed. Mm -hmm. And so I went off, I thought that was great. I got to define my own job. It was about 33 to 50% of my time for the next 18 months. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we did was we, we went out and through the Grocery Manufacturers Association and some other uh, organizations and IBM accounts, we invited grocery manufacturers to come in and printers and uh, art people that did packaging uh, work to come into a briefing where we would talk to them about here's what you got to be concerned about, here's what you really don't have to be concerned right, about. Right. And we tried to remove all the fears and everything like that and then we let them bring sample packages, their own packages, and scan on our scanner which we pretty much had the only UPC scanning scanner in the fall of 2000, uh, 1973, I'm sorry, 1973 and in 1974 spring. So they came down, they loved it, uh, there were a bazillion things that happened. Uh, I remember uh, Bill used to always kick off all these sessions with things, and, and there was a guy from Birdseye there who says, "Yeah, but you're you're scanning stuff away. We we have it. We, we all our stuff is in a freezer, and when it gets to the front end, it's got rime ice on it. And your symbol probably won't scan through the rime ice and everything." So we took his package and put it in the ice box and <laughs> brought it back out with the rime ice on it, scanned perfectly. You know, <laughs> he went home telling the story about, "No, oh, no problems, guys. It worked great." <laughs> And so we had a whole bunch of things coming. Yeah. We also uh, used to uh, tell people, you're reading this big thick book and you're, you're very concerned about the edges of the bars. Yeah, the edges, of the, top, the spec says this is what the edges of the bars have to be, but it's really not that sensitive. Uh, 
and we told them exactly how the scanner worked and how when it, if a girl went like this, we probably saw it 45, 50 times. And we averaged all that out, and 45, 50 times, yeah, we, we see it that often. We've got a scanner that's moving exceptionally fast, uh, and, and uh, that's not the problem. But there is this little paragraph over on page 94 or something that says, supermarket checkouts are helium neon lasers. They work at so many angstroms, okay? That means red bars on a white background all looks white. Green bars or black bars on a green background all look black. Well, one of the first samples that we got sent into us was a milk carton with red bars. And uh, then we had some gum that came in that was black bars on green. Couldn't stand it at all. You know, just wasn't going, physics wasn't going to work. So I would tell these people, and usually they'd say, all right, and you hear the, the we had arm in like 30, 40 at a time. They would be, Arr. and this one time I'm sitting there, and this voice right over here says, Coca-Cola's colors are red and white. Coca-Cola? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and uh, I looked at him and I said, this is not an industry conspiracy. No one is trying to make life tough for Coca-Cola. This is simple physics. Coca-Cola's colors are red and white. That's it. This is not IBM talking. This is not the industry industry trying to make life tough. This is not any sort of a challenge for you other than dealing with nature, Mother Nature as she is. Coca-Cola's colors are red and white. It wasn't going to change. <laughs> it wasn't going to change. And so uh, this time when they went in to scan their own package, I got one of the other guys to, to go in. I think it was Cuesta. And, uh, and I went down and looked for Joe Woodland who was one of the great strategists, you know, about how this whole thing's supposed to be done. I said, Joe, Coca-Cola's in the uh, briefing room and they tell me their only colors on their cans are red and white. And he understood immediately. And so he got a bunch of guys together and at 2.30 in the afternoon, he says, can I have a few minutes? And he came back and he said, we've been thinking about this problem and here's what we can do with all aluminum cans. We're shooting a laser beam at it. So if we hit a round surface, on a laser beam and it reflects well, which your aluminum cans do, okay, it's gonna go shooting off like that. Now, we'll never see it because we got a light collector down here at the bottom and we're looking for the diffuse light that comes off when you run a, a laser across paper because it just sprinkles back in all directions. But this one's gonna go like that and it'll look like a black bar to us. And that's why there's silver on the backgrounds of all aluminum cans today. You go look at them. Okay came out of that meeting right there. Huh. 